of these keystrokes that we're talking about I'd mentioned are called gestures. Right, so a gesture is a sequence of human actions completed as a set. So if we go back to our nomenclature when we typed cat, for most of us where we see cat as a whole word and we think cat, we don't think C-A-T, we just think cat and we type cat, that's one gesture. For someone for whom, say, English is not their first language and they have to actually spell it out, how many gestures do you think it is to them? Three. So with gestures, what is considered a gesture depends on actually the user. And how do most average users approach it? So that's really important to remember. It is, again, a sequence of human actions completed as a set. Now, why is this important? Well, how many of you remember that earlier in the semester I mentioned something called modes? A couple of you. So modes basically represent a system's current state. What state is the system in? What mode is the system in? Now, modes and gestures are very strongly related in most systems. Because a gesture can mean one thing in one mode and something else in another mode. Did I give you the example of the car and the accelerator yet? Yeah? So think about that, where you have, you know, you're, you know whether you, when you're push, pushing on the accelerator, depending on what mode your car is in, depends on whether you go forward or backward or you're just revving the engine. Same thing with digital technology. Now, you also want to remember that an interface can and will execute several different responses to a gesture. That is what we associate with mode. I'm going to be talking later on about monotony, which is a little bit different. Now, the example that I gave you with the cat a few minutes ago is something that's called chunking. This is something that we actually do when we're studying things all the time, or specifically even when we're remembering a phone number. So when you remember a phone number, do you remember each individual number separately, or do you kind of chunk it to, here's the area code, here's the first three numbers, and here's the last four numbers? How do you usually do it? You tend to chunk it. And in fact, if you look at a lot of these, um, I don't know, People who seem to have these amazing memories, they use things such as chunking as well as associations and other things to help them remember information better. So what you're basically doing is you're taking things that may actually be separate units such as separate numbers and you are putting them together into one unit. So you're taking separate items and putting them into a single mental unit. Great for studying. Now, when it comes to our gestures, keeping in mind a gesture is not just one physical action, it's how we are thinking about it, and we have a tendency to chunk things. When we have a gesture, and that same gesture can result in different actions depending on the mode that you are in, that is a sign that you have different modes. Sounds kind of obvious, right? You would hope. So let's look at an example when it comes to computer technology. What happens if you press an enter key when you are using a word processor? You get a new line. Let's say you all of a sudden realize, oh, I forgot to pay my credit card bill. Go to your browser, you put in your payment information, and now you cl click enter. Now what happens? It might process the payment. You hope it processes the payment, right? So in, it, in essence, hitting the enter key in that case causes a command to be executed. Now, this is a difference in mode in two different programs in the computer. But 
modes often are found in the same program. That's just kind of an exaggerated example. 